Hey guys, welcome back to another Punishing Graven video. Now, it appears that Punishing Graven just dropped the Fallen Star teaser a day ago, so from what I can see here, it looks really, really promising. It looks gorgeous. The graphics and everything just looks amazing, so I am very, very excited for it, so I hope it doesn't... I hope it really lives up to the expectations, so... So the date they show us here, which is the 9th of September, if we follow the footsteps of the CN Fallen Star PV, this might just be the release date for the Fallen Star event for the global server. Or maybe, you know, there's another scenario where maybe this date would be the um, date for a full PV for the Fallen Star and they actually release the event a day later, which is around like the 10th of September. We don't know it yet, but so far, you know, they're more like they are more likely to follow the footsteps of the CN server. So this would pretty much be the final release date for the Fallen Star event. Now, fun fact: ni the 9th of September is actually where the Frozen Darkness event ends on the global server. So what does that mean? This does indicate that the global server is trying to speed up the process by a tiny bit, which is pretty much a week. If you compare it back to where the CN server for the Frozen Darkness event ends. The CN server uh, Frozen Darkness event ends around like the 30th of January and they start the Fallen Star event around like what? The 6th of February. So CN players do have a week gap to kind of chill, cool down, you know, kind of do whatever they want, farm for cocks, farm for um, overclocked materials or farm for memories and whatnot, you know. For us global players, we don't seem to have that time to chill, which is pretty understandable because Every single game that comes from China that release a global version does that as well. They do it the same with Arknights, they do it with the same with Hong Kong Impact, so um, Punishing Grey Riven is not an exception, so it's unavoidable to be honest. Now speeding up the process do have a good and a bad side for it. The good side is we get more content more sooner so we won't get bored that easily. The bad side would probably be for F2P players because a whole week worth of black cards is gone. So. If you calc, if you actually go through the calculations and everything, um, I do think like a whole week worth of daily quests and weekly quests for black cards would probably stay around like what 1,200 black cards. So F2P players would be losing 1,200 black cards. It's not a big deal, all right. Listen to me, it's not a big deal. You would still get all the S class character that you need as long as your black card is current black cards is above like 1k or 2k. Then you would have a pretty good chance of getting as class Bianca. I did I did a poll recently, and almost like seventy to eighty percent of the people have almost more than a thousand or two thousand black cards left. So those players would probably have a very very good chance of getting as class Bianca. But for those players who actually waste their black cards on, I don't know what, who have their black cards balance under a thousand, then yeah. All I could say is good luck. It is kind of difficult to kind of save up black cards enough for the S class Bianca. For, for your situation, I would probably recommend you to go for the monthly card, to be honest, to kind of fill up the gap of like a several thousand black cards to kind of get S plus Bianca because a monthly card does cost around like five bucks. I think it's worth it for like 3,300 black cards. 3,300 black cards, if you're just gonna purchase it like straight out of the shop, it would cost you around like 50 bucks. So for 10% of the price, you could get the same amount of black cards. It's really worth the deal. So enough of all of that. Let's take a look at the overview of the new event falling star that we're getting. The two stars that we're going to introduce today is Dark Damage Watanabe, which is really popular amongst FTP players. And we do have a A-class tank semi sub DPS for a physical damage team, pretty much, which is Ayla. If we take a look at the abilities, well, not gonna take a look at the abilities. If you want to understand abilities or everything, you wanna get an in depth understanding, you could go to Punishing Grave and Wiki and take a look at all of this. So, the Morning Star Frame. The main thing that we have to take a look at here is pretty much the class. He's an attacker, so that means he's a DPS. And the main damage he's probably gonna be dealing is dark damage. So, so far, he's a pretty good um, dark damage DPS before Luna gets released. It's really not like a waste of resource if you invest resource into him because he's going to be very, very strong in the upcoming months. He's damaged outclass every single A-class pretty much. Um, Lucia, Dawn, uh, Bianca, Zero, or maybe like Lee, Pulsefire could not even 
compare with him because he's pretty much he should be in the S class category to be honest. But because players complain that there's way too much um, S class releasing in every single month, they could not keep up with that. It's pretty much a pay to win at this point. So they kind of adjusted to kind of nerf his stats to uh, close to A class character, but. He remains pretty strong. He's pretty much like a nerf S class, but he outclass every single A class. That's the reason why he's so strong and so popular amongst everyone. So the next one we're gonna take a look at is pretty much like Ayla. Her class is a tank, so kind of bump in with Kamui Bastion to be honest. Day two does pretty much the same thing if you ignore like the damage potential that they're doing, the sub DPS um, potential. If you take a look at their QD, pretty similar. Decrease the enemy's defense for 5 to 10% for 5 seconds and Kamui Bastion's QTE, pretty much the same. Decrease physical damage, physical defense by 5 to 10% for 6 seconds. So compared to Ayla, Kamui Bastion's uh, debuff does last a second more. Class specific is pretty much the same shit. You don't have to take a look at it. Well, for those who don't have like Kamui Bastion, you could choose to go for Ayla, but from my point of view, like Ayla is more like um, an aggressive tank, right? If you're using Kamui Bastion, you know that all uh, Kamui does is just blocking damage, getting shields, and try to drag the time as long as he possibly could until your main DPS CD is up. But for Ayla, she's more like on the damage side, right? If you swap from your main DPS to Ayla, you're not trying to kind of defense or you're not trying to kind of, you know, parry the attacks or anything. You're pretty much trying to do damage as well. So it's pretty it'll be pretty interesting on in terms of what um kind of memories you put on him because you're definitely not gonna put like uh support memories like Da Vinci or anything if you plan to do damage with Ayla as well. So you're probably gonna put like Hana or something else like that to do damage or maybe like Frederick. I don't know what else. So we would we would get through that uh, as soon as the character release. So we would take a look at what uh, memories kind of suit him for here, which the where they kind of recommend the gear is probably like uh, Da Vinci and Catherine did decrease like the uh, defense as well. So yeah, so far I don't think she is good with this if you plan to use her as a sub DPS to do damage on combat. But if you only try to use her QD, then why not just go with Kamui, right? It's the same thing. If you plan to just use their QT, then Kamui would do it better because Kamui QTEs do have the debuff for six seconds, a second longer than Ayla, so. If you're using Ayla for a tank, you want to go more damage on her because you would be using her attacks, her orbs, and everything to do more damage. So besides the character that we could be looking forward to, now I want to give you the overview of the event. So what could you expect? The event is probably going to be very, very similar to the Frozen Darkness event. You know, you do have like a stages for you to farm the event currency and you need to use the event currency to exchange for the items that you want in the shop. So... The first day that it states here, it's probably going to be like what? Chapter 9 story mode is going to be released and the hidden chapters for chapter 8 is probably going to be released as well. And this one, I don't really know what it's saying to be honest. Like, I think this is probably like the event stages where you just farm this one. This is the event currency probably. And you kind of accumulate the event currency and you would want to exchange for items like let's say um, these ones, right? These are the items that we see in the Frozen Darkness events shop before, so you get the idea. But the different thing here is this time you could be purchasing like this one. They have like two event currency. So you farm your stages and you get this one. Uh, I don't know what it's called, the Black Rock or something. And then you use the Black Rock to kind of purchase for this thing that looks like a Tesseract. And you probably would use this Tesseract to exchange for the to purchase the new set of memories, which is a signature memory for um, Dark Watanabe. This is for a whole set of memory that dedicates to like dark damage. So it's the perfect set for dark damage Watanabe. You would probably want that if you want to play dark damage Watanabe. This is the set that you go for. And after that, I think, yeah, the Tazarek and everything, and we do have, what is this? Notebook, a uh, report notebook that you could be used to exchange, like, extra rewards or something. I don't know the details about that. 
and we would have um, Dark Watanabe's interlude, uh, the story, to kind of get closer look at how Watanabe get his frame, maybe like a young version of Watanabe's story and Ayla's story as well. So really excited for that because interlude stages are the stages that I'm actually super interested in because they kind of line up the story really well. They kind of explain the past for all this construct, which I really, really like. And this one, I don't think this applies to S. This is pretty much like a lunar event, I guess. Only for a certain like festival they have, so I don't think we're getting this. And yeah, pretty much the same thing. You use uh, the Black Rock to exchange for the Tazarak, and you get the memories. And this one is... Yeah, so here is what we're saying, right? I think a lot of people would actually that want Dark Watanabe would plan to pull it in the standard banner. I do think they're not they're gonna implement Dark Watanabe and Ayla into the standard banner. They're not gonna put out like release a separate banner for that because they're only A class, they're not as class. They're probably gonna implement like a what? An upgrade uh upgrade R and D for A class, which means that you could choose whatever A class that you want for uh, your pools, let's say if you choose Dark Watanabe, then for the next time pool where you're guaranteed to get one A-class character, you would have like 80% chances of getting that character. So I think they're probably going to implement that feature to this patch. So not sure about that yet, you know. We'll have to see about that. But you do get um, Dark Watanabe for free in the event, just like the last Darkness Frozen Darkness event where you get... Kamui Bastion for free. Just use your event currency in exchange for the whole character. You could do it in this um, event as well. So it's pretty much the same thing. And for the next patch, in CN server, they did release the Tower of Babel. I don't know if they're going to come to the global server in the next patch. We'll just have to, you know, kind of wait for that to see if it actually comes out. So far, I think it's kind of an you know, 50-50, they might or they might not, but, you know, they probably would follow the um, CN server so far, but I'm not, I couldn't 100% confirm that it's going to be released, but I do think that is a pretty good chance that they're going to release the Tower of Babel for us, but if they do release, that means good, more content for us, pretty much. And, yeah, we're probably going to be getting a lot more 6-star memories for free as well, don't really care about that because I have all of that already. And the rest is just nonsense. And yeah, the signature weapon for Dark Watanabe and Ayla. That's it. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. And make sure you subscribe because when the event drops, I'm probably going to do a stream. Depends which uh, platform I want to stream on. Maybe on YouTube, maybe on Twitch. See if anyone is interested in it. And I'm probably going to be doing a video event guide for where to which um materials you should be prioritizing on farming which stages you should be farming so that you won't waste all your serum on um, stages that doesn't give you the maximum amount of event currency and i'm probably going to do an overview for dark watanabe because i would be investing a lot of resource into this dps because i do have hope for this uh, dark watanabe to do a good damage in my war zone and pain cages as well so probably going to put a lot of time into this construct i'm going to do like an, an overview a pretty much a guide for him about how to utilize him fully doing damage, uh, his team members, the memory set that you could use as an alternative, maybe you don't want to use like the exact dark damage uh, memory set for him, you want to do something different like Hana, Federic, those does apply as well, I would be doing a comparison as well. So if you're interested in any of those, make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Peace.